Hello everybody and welcome back to the DSLR Workshop, the show that's all about photography and not about gear. I'm your host Steven Zeller and I'm teaching you how to maximize the power of your digital SLR camera. Alright, in today's episode we're going to take a look at some post-production stuff and a reader of the, uh, the blog and also of the podcast, a viewer of the podcast, uh, Damon, asked for some information about post-processing and editing software and stuff like that. So today we're going to talk about Lightroom and then in a couple other episodes we're going to talk about a couple of different other options for editing your photos. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll head over to the computer and take a look. Alright, so here we are in Lightroom 3 and uh, more commonly known as Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. This is the piece of software that I use for 90 to 95 percent of all my post-production work. I import my images into this piece of software. I organize them over here with my folders and I do most of my editing and exporting right here. I very 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 seldom have to go to Photoshop for anything unless I want to correct a major issue to an image or if I want to add a certain effect like a type effect or something that I can't do within Lightroom especially if I want to work with layers. Lightroom doesn't allow me to work with layers but it is a very very powerful tool. Lightroom goes for uh, $299 brand new. Uh, the upgrades are $99 a piece and well worth the price of admission I'm here to tell you right now. Some of the basic uh, overviews here that we're going to cover is I'm going to cover some of the different modules and show you how the, the marriage between Lightroom and Photoshop works so you can kind of get an idea of what some of my workflow is and how I would operate in order to process some images. So starting off here in the library module you can see that it I've got a view where I'm looking at a bunch of different images. The library module is handy because I can rate images, I can filter them, I can decide whether or not I want to keep an image, whether I want to you know, pick it, if I want to reject it. Because when I'm going through and shooting, and especially when you're first starting out, you're probably only going to keep 5 to 10% of everything that you shoot. And that's because you're still getting used to the camera, you're still getting used to making adjustments, what button does what. And so you want to... Uh, make sure that you're all set and you're good to go. So it's going to take practice. So in the library module, I can edit all that stuff out. I can throw away images that I know that I'll never use and continue on to editing just the stuff that I want to keep, which is really, really, really handy. Now the develop module allows me to process images. It allows me to work with them. I can uh, make changes to exposure. I can make changes to brightness and contrast, vibrance, saturation. I can make tone curve adjustments. I can adjust individual colors for hue, saturation, and luminance. I can also do split toning effects. I can add sharpening to a photo, which is very important in the digital world because uh, digital is a little bit flat, so we have to add some sharpening to make sure our images are nice and crisp. I can do noise reduction to remove digital noise. I've got lens corrections. So if I have an issue with a type of distortion or something for a particular lens, I can get rid of that. I can add effects like vignetting and film grain. And I've also got camera calibration options which use a particular camera profile. And that's mainly when you're shooting with raw images is where you're going to use that camera calibration. All right, so that's my develop module. Very, very handy tool. I can zoom in at 100%. And one other tool that's very helpful in the develop module is the brush tool. And the custom brushes are really nice because I can do things like brighten the eyes, I can dodge, I can enhance the iris of an eyes, add red lips, you know, if somebody's got red lips, I can enhance that a little bit, soften skin, whiten teeth, a bunch of different things that I can do all right here within Lightroom that you used to have to go to Photoshop for. Don't have to do that so much anymore. I can do most of my retouching right here in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. All right, so next is a slideshow module, and what this module does is allows you to create custom slideshows right from within the software. It's really great because if you want to show images to friends, family, if you're shooting for a client, you can do that all right here. I can add uh, my identity plate, as you can see I've got right here with my logo. I can change the colors. I can add music. Um, it's really, really, really powerful as far as slideshows go, considering that you don't have to go to an external program to be able to create the slideshows. Okay, it's not perfect. There's some things that I wish that it, it had that it doesn't, but it's still not bad. I can export my files to a PDF, as you can see right here. I can also export them to a video, so it makes sharing very easy with somebody who doesn't have Lightroom or somebody who's not sitting in front of me. Really, really handy. 
Now the print module is great because if I want to print a custom print package or something like that to an inkjet printer, print out 4x6s for my home use or 5x7s, even an 8x10, I can do that. Of course you can print bigger if you have a printer that supports it. Lightroom doesn't care about that, but if I'm printing big prints, they're going to my lab, they're not going to my inkjet printer. I can add different types of images to the package with preset sizes, common sizes that are already loaded right into Lightroom. I don't have to go through any fancy footwork to try and get that done. I can still add my logo to images if I want. If I'm creating proofs, I could do that. I can also make adjustments to my print re resolution and print sharpening, and I can also manage my colors, either using a custom profile or allow my printer to manage my uh, color handling all right from it within the print module. Very, very useful tool. Well, really all of Lightroom is very useful, but the print module is very handy if you want to print something out. Now the web module. This is probably one of my favorite add-ons to Lightroom. It comes packaged with the software. It allows you to create custom HTML and Flash web galleries that you can export and use on the web. You don't have to learn code. You don't have to learn Flash. It's not complicated. All you have to do is just export it, and I can even use the upload tool to upload it to a web server right from within Lightroom. Extremely, extremely useful and extremely powerful for, t for photographers because most of them don't want to learn Flash or HTML. So you can look through there, a bunch of different galleries. It's really, really, really great. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the library module. Actually, I'm going to move to the develop module, and we're going to work on a photo here that uh, I want to take to Photoshop to add a specific effect. But before we do that, I'm going to show you another reason why I would go. As I mentioned, I'd go to Lightroom to correct a problem with an image. This particular image of my daughter has a nice dark spot right there on her cheek. And what that's from is it's from a piece of water that had splashed up in front of the lens, didn't get lit by the light like these other water droplets did and created a nice dark spot right there on her face. Now we wouldn't want that and if we were only using Lightroom I would have a real hard time getting rid of it. Lightroom does have a spot removal tool which I can remove you know spots and specks and stuff like that but I have to have a clean area for Lightroom to go to to be able to try and correct that and because of the size of it and the where it's at on her face I'm gonna have a really hard time trying to get a good result with that in Lightroom. So I went over to Photoshop and as you zoom in here, you can see that I completely got rid of it. No more, uh, no more dark spot on her face. Cleaned up the image. And that's the power of Photoshop. Photoshop allows you to do some very, very precise cloning and healing and allows you to remove things like that from your photos that would be otherwise distracting or say, yeah, I can't use that shot. I got to get rid of it. Okay, so getting back to our photo that we're going to work on here. I've already applied some processing that uh, I want to do in Lightroom. So I'm all set and ready to go. I'm going to hit Command E on my Mac. You can hit Control E on a PC to, to go right over to Lightroom. Or, I'm sorry, to Photoshop. And Lightroom just kicks it right over to Photoshop and you'll see it bring up the image. Okay? Now one of the things you notice, I've got a couple of spots here that I missed when I was doing my spot removal. So I'm going to go in and clean those up real quick. Use my zoom tool. Zoom in here and grab my patch tool. And all I have to do with the patch tool is just make a selection around the spot that I want to remove, drag it to a clean area, Photoshop takes care of the rest. Hit Command D or Control D to deselect. Come over to here to this other spot, circle it up. And that's it, I'm all done. So now I can zoom back out, look at my whole photo, everything looks pretty good. Okay, there's a little spot here, but that's actually part of the cloud, so I'm going to leave that not going to remove anything that that's uh, natural uh, naturally occurring in the photo unless it's super distracting. Alright for this effect I'm going to apply I'm going to duplicate my image by hitting command J and then I'm also going to hit shift command U to desaturate that new layer that I just created. Uh, command J duplicates your current layer so I've got two layers here now my original picture is still intact it's all right there I just added a new layer on top of it and I can toggle those layers on and off by turning off this uh, eye icon there on the, the left hand side in the layers palette. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a filter and I'm going to go to filter other high pass and I'm going to add a very uh, edgy type of it's almost like over sharpening or hyper sharpening to my photo. 
I like my radius set to about 80 pixels. Click OK. Now the photo doesn't look so great. Okay, got some haloing going on right here. You know, not too, not too flattering. So I'm going to change my blend mode on that top layer selected to overlay. All right, getting a little better, still a little over the top for me. So what I'll do now is I'll drag the opacity, again with that top layer still selected, drag my opacity down until it looks good. Uh, let's see, we'll get down here right around 30% I think is looks like it's going to be good. So that's pretty good. Here's my before. There's my after. All I'm doing is just toggling off that top layer. So I'm happy with the result there. I'm going to flatten my image by clicking my menu in my layers palette, selecting flatten image. Now I've got all my images merged together onto one layer. And all I have to do now is save it. Save the image. And guess what? When I go back over to Lightroom, there's my processed image. Here's my original. There's my processed image. Very s easy. You don't have to worry about saving files to a new location, re-importing into Lightroom. It handles all that for you. So it's why it's my tool of choice. I can do so much with it. It's easy for me to go to Photoshop and come right back into Lightroom with minimal of trouble. And then I can export everything right from here. And I've got everything managed in my catalog from the library module. Okay, I've got most of my working images here saved on my hard drive. I also have an external photo drive that I keep all my archives on so I can access everything that I need to all from right here within Lightroom. I don't have to go digging through the Finder or through Windows Explorer if I was on a PC to try and find images. I can do it right here within Lightroom. All right, so that's my tutorial on Lightroom. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching the DSLR workshop. All right, so that was a little bit about Lightroom 3 and how you can use it to improve your images and post-process and manage your images. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check us out on iTunes at the iTunes store and view us on the web at www.thedslrworkshop.com. Find us on Facebook and become a follower on Twitter. All right, thanks again for tuning in. Take care. We'll see you next week.